Hello, my name is Dennis Deloach, and I'm the host of the Uncle Jim Effect podcast, and I want to welcome you to episode number 33. Thank you so much for visiting and spending your time with us. Uh, could I ask you a favor, please? Could you please subscribe below to this podcast? It helps us a lot. A and like the podcast. We're also located on Apple Podcast and Spotify now, which are great accomplishments. We're excited about this. We're now approaching or more than 20,000 subscribers, growing very quickly. Uh, and we, we know that what we're talking about here is resonating with you. Thank you so much. Again, the purpose of this podcast is to create opportunities for millions of people to realize their God-given potential, and then more importantly, to magnify that newfound God-given potential in the service of their family, their friends, neighbors, and in the communities they live in. And as we do that together, we're going to create what we're terming a tsunami of hope. And uh, we know that that can happen. We know it will change the world, even if it's in just our little corner. And so thank you for being a big part of that. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is competitive nature. And basically to me, competitive nature seems to have disappeared or become a bad word uh, in the last 10, 20 years. But we're going to talk about how competitive nature is an absolute must for us as human beings in anything we do. Right. So we're going to de define what competitive nature is, what it is, what it isn't and what it should look like. And we're going to talk about how we use that to our advantage in our life, in any area of life we're talking about. So as I always do, I'm going to start this with a quote. And this quote, quote is by one of the great uh, thought provokers of all time, in my mind, John Maxwell, uh, one of the greatest people who talks about leadership and different types of qualities. And it's done a lot for millions of people around the world. He says, successful and unsuccessful people do not vary greatly in their abilities. They vary in their desire to reach their potential. Think about that. How many talented people do we know that did not reach their potential? Sometimes having talent is a curse because you can get away without developing a skill set, a work ethic, competitive nature, because you can glide and perform well at whatever we're talking about. And so the difference between successful and unsuccessful people a lot of times isn't that they are so much different in abilities. It's basically it's who has the desire to reach that potential. And I've seen that in my life, whether we're talking about business, sports, or anything, those that want, truly want to accomplish something in life and go about it in the right series of steps with the right attitude, tend to always accomplish their goals. And so we're going to talk about that. So what is competitive nature? Uh, simply put, it's having a strong desire to win or be the best at something. And so why does that have a negative connotation in today's society that when you want to win or you want to be the best at something that somehow is negative. Now I agree that if you pursue being the best and if you pursue wanting to be the best at something in a negative manner with all kinds of bad side effects along the way, that that can be absolutely negative. And that's not competitive nature in this context isn't stomping on your opponent and eliminating your opponent and driving them into oblivion. In this context, we're going to talk about competitive nature, meaning competing against myself and what's easy for me, meaning I'm really comfortable. So I, why do I want to go out and start that workout program. My business is making X. Why do I want that to go 2X or 5X? You know, I'm doing okay and I've got this amount of money in, in my bank. Why do I want to make that better? And I'm not saying that any of those things you need to. If you're satisfied in life, great. But competitive nature means our innate human desire to improve our situation, 
or to when we compete, whether it's in business or when we compete in a sport, there's a reason they keep score. And that is to see how we're doing typically against an opponent, but the only true great competitors measure themselves as how much they get better. And truly, if you can perform to the utmost best of your ability and get every ounce out of yourself, what does it matter what your opponent does? Because you have done everything you can and you lie exhausted on the battlefield or the playing field or the business field, you should absolutely have a heart full of uh, joy and accomplishment if you've literally given it everything you have. I think very few people can say they've done that at stages in their life. And uh, I've, I've had that ability several times uh, during my athletic career um, to where I knew that I literally had given everything I could, that I had nothing else left to give. And that at that point, I transitioned past a, I guess, a, a wall that most of us never get across to where I literally knew at that point that I was absolutely comfortable and okay with the effort I had given. And in fact, one of those times we didn't win the game that I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm very competitive. I don't like to lose in anything, but I remember having a feeling that almost shocked me at the time was that I was actually content and I was actually okay that we had not won the game only from the sense of as an individual that played a team game, I knew and it was manifest to me that I had done literally everything I could do. And that feeling I had was joyful. And I didn't understand it at the time. This was actually my last game in high school. And I remember thinking how heartbroken I was because we had lost and it was in the state playoffs. Uh, I knew I was not going to be playing with all these at the time, the greatest friends on, in, on the planet Earth, my high school buddies. And I knew at that time, even though we had lost and we had were done, and I think this is a, a tender mercy the Lord gave me to help propel me to my next step, which would be Division One football. He actually let me know, or the inside voice to me, literally let me know that that was rarefied air that I was in, which was crossing that line of literally giving everything you've given. And as I've coached high school kids for tw over 20 years, I've had that talk with a lot of them, whether it was at a halftime or not, and just said, I want you more than anything in life to have that feeling that I did by giving it everything you had and you were exhausted and knew that you could not have done anything more. I said, that is something you can't explain, you don't understand, and you can't buy. That's something you have to earn. And I'm grateful for the opportunity I had to be put in a position to have the God to have the God given opportunity and ability to be able to experience that. And I know maybe you have as well. We can all experience it, and it can be in the relationships, it can be in getting healthy, it can be in business, it can be all of those things, anything that requires an effort. So we're going to get back and talk about competitive nature. What's the opposite of competitive nature? In my mind, the word to me is entitlement. What does entitlement mean? That means that we're irregardless of action or work, that I am do something that I've done nothing to earn. And I think entitlement is a bad, bad thing. I remember years and years ago when my children were younger that they came out with this concept of participation trophy and not keeping score. And I remember at the time thinking, are they kidding? This is a joke, right? But it wasn't. A couple of funny stories uh, that shows how 
most human beings, if not all, have got a competitive nature inside of them. You take even the most docile, in this example, uh, woman who has never played sports, never exhibited that, and you've never seen them get excited about anything. You give them a child, their own child, and then go try and take that child away from them or try to injure that child. I'm not advocating for that, but can you imagine what would happen when they talk about the mama bear uh, effect? So here's a competitive nature coming out in somebody. So I don't want to hear that some people are so docile that they do not have competitive nature. We inherit our uh, natures from our heavenly father and heavenly parents. And I believe they're competitive. That's where we get this from. How do you create a universe? <laughs> How do you create competitive children if there's no competitive nature within yourself? So I, I believe that that's a divine attribute if used properly. We're going to talk about that. Back to the story. A couple of them. Uh, my oldest son, we were uh, at a soccer game of his, and I think he was six years old. And he was a pretty good athlete, and he was doing really well. And he kind of, kind of got bored with it. And uh, we were asking him, you know, gosh, why aren't you running as much? He said, oh, it's too easy. And so I remember at one halftime game, I was getting frustrated. And uh, so we talked to him. And back then at the time, you know, I thought, well, what's the most important thing to him in the world? At that point, I was getting baseball cards and football cards. And so I said, hey. For every goal you get in this second half, I want to see you work hard. For every goal you get, you're going to get a, I'll get you a pack of baseball cards. I, at the time, I think they were 15 cents, 20 cents, whatever they were. And sure enough, this young kid who had kind of shuffled his way through the first half went out in that second half and scored, I believe, six or seven goals. And I went and got him all those baseball cards. But it was amazing to me to see that energy shift to see that competitive nature come out when presented with a challenge. And so what is it in your life or the people that work for you or your children, what is that benefit that they're looking for to increase their competitive nature? Another great example is my middle son. We were playing T-ball and it's hard to keep scoring T-ball because they all get to run and do the bases. And I remember there was a, uh, I guess, how do I say this nicely? A an entitlement supportive concept gentleman that was coaching the other team. And I don't mean that to be a knock, but uh, as kids were going and throughout the game, towards the end, uh, I remember, you know, kids as they do, they were saying, well, who's winning? What's the score? And he said, oh, we don't worry about the score. and the score is even, it's tied up and out of nowhere. And I was so proud and bit my tongue and had to turn around and laugh that out of nowhere, my middle son chimed up as loud as he could and he was in the outfield. He said, uh-uh, the score is 22 to 16 and we're winning. And I laughed. I, this was probably, I don't know, a five or six year old kid. And I, in that moment, was so proud and thought that's exactly people are that way. People have a competitive nature. And I'm not saying you ought to go out and have T-ball teams practicing hours a day and running wind sprints. And I'm not saying that, but I'm saying unleash the competitive nature that we as humans have and let people develop that, whether it's in sports, dance, music, band, business, whatever it is, that you love or they love, use competitive nature to improve performance, create more joy, to realize God-given potential, all of those things. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. That is why we're given competitive nature. So competitive nature is this. Now, I want to talk about this, and I'm going to frame this quote within the confines of competitive nature from a business standpoint. And you'll know what I'm talking about in a minute. 
So this is Henry Ford, one of the greatest inventors of all time that invented the automobile and the Ford Motor Company. He says, competition whose motive is merely to compete, to drive some of their fellow out, never carries very far. The competitor to be feared is one who never bothers about you at all, but goes on making his own business better all the time. I love that quote. And what to me that quote means is competitive nature always should be about how do I make myself better at all times in whatever endeavor I'm talking about. It does me no good to say, I want to be better than that person because I might already have been given more abilities and I might be missing out on the opportunities to maximize my potential. Maybe I'm supposed to have a lot more potential in this specific endeavor than they do. And they have it more in another area than I do. So comparing ourselves, as the quote says, comparison is the thief of joy. So when we compare ourselves to other people, we don't get joy because instead of realizing like I did in that football game that I lost, if I would have compared myself to a, a kid that never even played on the other team was jumping them down to happy because he had won, I would have missed out on one of the greatest lessons I've ever learned in my life to date, which was completely giving of oneself in an effort towards a goal to complete exhaustion is a sacred spiritual experience that opens up doors to you as a person to things you can accomplish that you can't even imagine. And so comparing myself to others is only okay when we keep score. But as far as performance goes, I always want to focus on how do I improve my performance. The only thing I control is how I react and respond and train and perform, not how you do. And so that's a key concept there. And I wanted to make sure that we talked about that. So competitive nature is internal. Competitive nature should drive me internally. Again, how do I maximize my God-given potential? And I might not have near the potential you do in something. So for me, I might get to a level seven and be phenomenally happy and you get to level nine and you haven't even approached your potential. Great example of that. And I've used it before is that Moab half marathon that uh, is overweight as I was. I came in dead last out of a thousand people on one of the hardest half marathons in the United States in Moab. And nobody in that race was happier than I was because I literally had maxed out my potential. There was, no more uh, higher road in the sport of running for me than that. That was the pinnacle. And I'm sure some people that came in third or fourth were mad they didn't win. So anyway, that's an example. It's internal. Doing everything you can with all you've got as long as you can. I love that quote. That's the key in life is just do everything you can with everything you've been given for as long as you can. If you do that, you will never be a failure. You will win at everything. And then another one is self-accountable. Always be accountable for your actions because nobody else is accountable and no one else is responsible for your actions other than you. And there are no excuses. You control every aspect of your life, even if it's an external force on you, because you always control how you respond to that. Uh, Lots of times, everybody wants to put a barrier on you. And it's usually by other people. Uh, competitive nature internally is, how do I push through self-perceived barriers? Sometimes we put them on ourselves. Other times people put them on us. It doesn't matter. Push through those. That's what competitive nature is good at. Stewardship. Stewardship is the fierce protection of the assets of the owner. And in this case, specifically, we're talking about God-given potential. The 
assets and gifts and talents and abilities we've been given are gifts from God that he owns, that he's given to us for the uh, opportunity for us to share with others to help make their life and our lives better along the way. Be a good steward of those gifts. Don't settle for getting 78% out of what you've been given. Give it everything you have. Be competitive to get every inch out of everything you've been given. Quiet, self-confident people are always the people that I've been drawn to. I've got friends who have played in uh, multiple Super Bowls, played in the NFL. I've got some friends who have played in the NBA. I've got some friends who are Navy SEALs that are uh, big-time CEOs of major companies that maybe some we've heard of. And most of those people, you might not ever know it if you were to sit down with them and see them out of their element. You would know there was something interesting and different about them, but there would be such a quiet confidence exuded by those people that it, it, that's always been a strength to me. So competitive nature is not loud. It's not uh, boisterous. It, it is enabling. It draws people to it. It helps people along the way. And then competitive nature is spiritually based. And if you're familiar with in the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30, they talk about the parable of the talents. And a master has three people that work for him. And he's about to go on a big journey. So he pulls them all in and says, look, I'm going to give you, at that time, a big measure of money was called a talent. And he says to one, I'm going to give you five talents. And I'm going to give you two talents and I'm going to give you one talent. And while I'm gone, I want you to do the best with that that you can. And when I return, I want you to report to me what you did with that. So as the master goes off, he comes back quite a while later. And he asked the first one, he said, I gave you five talents. What did you do? And he said, master, I put it to work and I've created five more talents. And so here are the 10 talents. And he basically said, well done, thou good and faithful servant, because you've been faithful over a few things. I will make you master over many. And so the next one that he had given two talents through the, the two talents, two came and reported the same thing. Master, I've doubled that. You gave me two, here's four. And he said the same thing to him. And then the final worker that he'd given one to said, I was basically afraid. I know you're a hard man. I didn't want to lose anything, so I buried that in the ground, but here's your one talent back. And the master was very, very upset with him and said, look, I gave you that. You basically were lazy, did nothing, and because of that, you're banished. And so the concept I want to look at there, and there's so many things that we can learn from that, but some of us are given five talents of ability, opportunity. Some are only, of us are only given two. It doesn't matter. So if I see someone who is much better at anything than me, and I think, gosh, that's that person's just a natural. They might end up being the world champion and the CEO of a billion dollar company and a successful mother or father. And I'm only a two talent person and I'm, you know, an hourly worker and, and you know, all of those things. It doesn't matter. Those two both got the exact same blessing, even though one was a five talent person, one was a two talent. That told me that it doesn't matter what I'm given, maximize what you're given, and you get the same reward as the person that was given a little more. But what you don't want to do is hide your talent, not be competitive, not try to do things. Then we're not in good shape. And so that, to me, is what competitive nature is. What it is not is external. It's not boisterous, loud, obnoxious, in your face. It's not a zero-sum game, meaning the only way I win is you lose. It's one of I win, you lose. Everybody can win in competitive nature. So it's not that. It's not shortcuts. Having a competitive nature is a lot of work, and it's sticking to the game plan and the process, and it's not shortcuts. It's not an at-all-cost attitude. It might be from an internal perspective, meaning I'm not going to quit no matter what. But it doesn't mean I'm going to step on anybody, ruin that person or this business or destroy them to get my goal. That's not competitive nature at all. So as we bring this to a close, I hope that's 
helped a little bit. And I hope these stories helped you. This has been a really uh, interesting topic for me because it made me think back to that. I'm blessed to have had a wife who was extremely competitive. Unfortunately, our children got A-type personalities from both parents. They're all competitive in their nature. And I couldn't be more proud of six human beings who exhibit these traits that I'm talking about that are extremely ultra competitive, but in my mind, exhibit every one of these traits of being internally strong. I want to finish with this quote from Vince Lombardi, who was one of the greatest football coaches ever, who they named the Super Bowl trophy after. And he said, winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. Competitive nature is wanting to win in everything you do, irregardless of what you're doing, in the right manner. And today we talked about what the right manner is. So go out there, be competitive in everything you do. Make sure it's the right way, but don't back down from anything. Uh, Keep up the great work. For us to get this tsunami of hope to millions and millions of people, we're absolutely going to have to be competitive in nature. And and I welcome the challenge. Thank you so much for taking the time to spend with me today. And uh, go get busy getting after it. Talk to you soon.